Hey guys, Dave here from Nerdarchy, for nerds by nerds, and hanging out with some of my esteemed colleagues. I'm Ted. I'm Nate. Today we're going to help you avoid the pitfalls and traps of the DMJ, or actually place them in your player's path, as the case may be. Yes. So, uh, traps, Dungeons, Dungeons Dragons, Fifth Edition. What do we think, dude? I, you know what? It's a mixed bag. There, there's some things I like about it. They put some cool traps in here, like they, you, they got the ones you expect. They, you know, they show you how to combine traps to make them even more, you know, make them worse. Um, you got magical traps. They have mechanical traps. And of course, what section on traps would be complete without a sphere of annihilation? Uh, no, I was gonna, <laughs> yes. gonna say it. I mean, we, we've uh, we've been involved in many games dating back to you know through through the years where Dungeon Master's like, oh, I just have to put it out there for the sake of putting it out there. Well, you can thank Gary Gygax himself for that <laughs> with the Tomb of Horrors. He was the first one to do the uh, sphere of annihilation trap. He set the bar. He did. He said included it high. in your games itself. Well, if uh, you know, if you're doing it as a DM, let me just throw it out there. Don't just put a sphere of annihilation like on the other side of a door or on the bottom of a well. Have it make sense. Like if you've got it in a wizard's tower or somewhere where you know uh, a you know high magicy presence could legitimately do it, great. But I don't think a sphere of annihilation is a naturally occurring magical trap. They go anywhere, man. <laughs> that's just, maybe that's just, in our. Campaign Gif Griffin Gaff, it can be <laughs> part of the chaos stuff. Well, it just happens. Yeah, well, yeah. I was reading the whole the traps, and I said, "All right, where is it? I'm rolling trap, rolling sphere. We're getting closer." <laughs> like, oh, sphere annihilation! Excellent. Excellent. Well, My trap I, reading is complete. This book is complete. <laughs> <laughs> I want to just point out that you know that that the the breakdown of you know what you want to make a hey, it's a it's a this type of trap for this level of character at this level of severity and forget whatever else is in there. You can just design whatever you want. You want kobolds that make spinning blades or spike pits or whatever else. You don't have to go by their preset things in there. You can just design it specifically for what you want. And I think that's fantastic. That's one of the things I, I don't know if it's just because I've been playing longer, but when I was younger and, and reading these books, I never really looked to see if there was customizable stuff. But that's the first thing I go to in 5th edition is, okay, do how, they give me something? How can I make it my own? Yeah, do and, they and give me something that I can just do whatever I want? And, and here they got the, the different types, the severity of the traps, and they've got the damage per level. Well, based th on the severity. But, and if you I mean, actually look at it, the customized stuff is first. Yeah. You have to read through that before you actually get to the mm -hmm. sample traps. Well, the thing that's really nice about the, the layout, too, is the way they did the traps, right? So it describes the trap. It tells you the DC to find the trap. And then it tells you, you I think usually it's an investigate check to figure out how to disarm it. Uh -huh. and, and then it tells you, you know... What to do? What the trigger is? You know, if it's a pressure plate, you know, it tells you you gotta. Basically, you have to jam a pin or a pin in there or something mm -hmm. to keep the pressure plate from going down. Or if it's a trip wire, you have to cut the wire. Like it kind of like it, it adds. It's not just the mechanics. There's the fluff to it as well. Yeah, it's not just oh, we'll make this DC safe and you can avoid it. <laughs> so yeah, but and by they doing give it, you the you know you read through all of them and and you go back to customizing your own. It kind of helps put that in your head that oh wait a minute you this know, is it, what I need to do yeah set my DC then go you know, to the next step it, it's it's it goes back to more than requiring mechanics to get through an encounter and, and you know just and they even say right in here right under under in the beginning of traps like hey you know what sometimes your players are gonna think of something that you you didn't think about or it's not written down and that's okay you can let them beat it if it was a good idea Absolutely. you don't have to roll the dice Permission to not roll the dice. <laughs> Which, yeah, we need that. A lot of people need that coming from uh, Pathfinder and 3.x because everything was spelled out for you so much. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you always went to the dice or to the rules where here it says, nah, it's okay to think and have a brain. <laughs> Which is, you know, I, I think one of the you know clear winning signs of 5th edition. You know, uh, the, again, the amount of work that they've, they've put into this, uh, this edition, I'm really happy with. Well, that's one of the things that got kind of gutted in th third edition that I, I think a lot of us just took it for granted and didn't realize it. It wasn't until I got into fifth that I realized how many things that weren't in third that I missed. And, well, I mean, and third, 
it, it's not that they were like I would. It's not that I think they were trying to limit that. They were providing us with so many options and so so many things spell it out and, and you know stackable things that all like okay, well we got to give you all these rules that they didn't allow you know the the printing time and the and the page count to be able to say well you can still do this yeah uh, by the way you can still think and do it your own you way know, it's still and your game it, it and, and that's the thing as a dm you're sitting in that chair you're the one that gets to make the call and it doesn't matter what system what game you're running as the dm you are the end all be all of the rules and a, and a lighter rule system allows for well it's you have to look to the dm and his right. decision absolutely <clears throat> rather than well you know in this book it says this so this is what we're following right so now there is one thing that i kind of don't like in the section all right what, what don't you like several of the traps the bottom is a dc 10 okay why, why don't why don't you like that is it too low everyone starts with a d with a 10 passive people only people really? that have a below That's average right. In their wisdom score or their perception check, will actually fail that. So to me, you know, I think the bottom should be like a twelve. Well, I feel like with the ten, they're saying, "Hey, you can see what this is, but you know, can you disarm it? Can you get around it?" I think it gives people who don't have rogues or people with the ability to disarm those traps. It gives you a, an out. For how to get it, like how to creatively uh, uh, okay. get around it. So the the simple pit, no problem. I, I can totally go. I can buy that. It's an obstacle. They still have to f work their way around it. It can come back into play. The collapsing roof, spot any tripwire to the DC ten, is really weak. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll definitely buy the that tripwire at DC ten. Yeah, no, that's uh, weak. That's, like maybe you want to like if you're underground and the, the light is dim, you know maybe you know is that supposed to incur minuses to your perception checks you know like, dim light i think is a it might be a, a minus one or disadvantage yeah, but if so, it's a passive check it doesn't matter because there's no there's no roll now a dc 10 tripwire with a set of dc 15 or 20 pressure plates behind it would be really nice because they're like oh i see that trap i'm just, just step over, over it. it i'll just step over it and genius <laughs> so combining traps always a good thing especially if you want to put in some of those low-level traps, but you also want to kind of like play some mind games. Yeah, the bit. falling net is another one where again the trip wires are all all a DC ten. So really, I mean, unless the character is suffering a penalty for uh, perception, but mm -hmm. see, I like I like I said, I don't think it's a minus. Yeah, so, so I think you know, it's you're going, you have to have like a low wisdom. So right? if you're going with the basic stat array and you decide to put your eight in wisdom, that's the only way you're going to miss this. Yeah, so, even well, if it, even in dim light when you have penalties, but because the penalty, right. how, how does disadvantage work against a passive score? Right. So basically, mm. you know, if if you're not happy with the samples, I mean, you can always just modify it. Oh uh, yeah, I would up it to yeah. just a twelve. So, just so there's a role involved, and like a person that's an average person's not going to see it. Well, I mean, it's, it's it's so that it's basically going, you know, for for the characters that have have actually taken the skill or have taken the time to be better at that on no. the ones that are getting it rather than oh well you all see this what can bump up passive perception uh, uh being proficient yeah being, being proficient being, in perception being proficient feats. in high wisdom high wisdom high wisdom okay and then the, yeah this observant feet and okay well see so that's re readily available so you're not like right. get, you're yeah. getting the one up on all the entire party someone uh, an elf will see it right Elf, elf will automatically train in perception, so... So, yeah, they're going to see it right there with a 12. So, yeah, you don't have an elf. You're kind of at a disadvantage for seeing those traps. But, yeah, 10, everybody yeah, seeing it's kind of lame. You know, you're, you know, a lot of your characters have perception. Yeah. You know, they're, they, then there's uh, your druids, your clerics that are wisdom-based. So so, at a, so a 10 really is weak sauce. I mean, yeah. in, in a standard party, you're probably going to have a rogue. You're probably going to have a cleric. Right. Both of those characters could see it. If there happens to be an elf in the party as well, they're going to see it. Yeah. yeah so, mm -hmm. like, even like an, an elven cleric probably has a passive perception check of a fifteen to start. Well, they're 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 trained and they have the, uh, you know. What's the radius? Will he see it before, let's say, the fighter ten fifteen feet ahead of him sees it? I mean, he trips it. So, like, is there? 
Do you have to be the guy that's right up on it to see it? You know what? I'm not actually sure. Because that would also... I would think so. Like, I think if you're at the back, you're not gonna you're not gonna see it before the like. If there's four of you, and the and the three people in front of you don't have a way of finding it, but you oh. can see it. I think they're gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna be like, don't step, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as the roof is collapsing or the net is falling. <laughs> but you know that that's my only that was my only gripe that you know I like the traps that they give, collapsing roof, falling net, fire breathing statue, pits. Uh, you know, there's uh, four different pits: poison darts, poison needle, rolling sphere, sphere of annihilation. I mean, I don't know. They could probably left out the sphere of annihilation, but I, that's just a nod. You know, so it was put in there. <laughs> you can, I like I like the poison needle and the fire breathing statue. Uh, you know, they're 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 kind of my favorites. Well, and two, you know, like the fire, like the fire breathing st- statue, that could be a lightning bolt. That could be oh, yeah, yeah, you acid, can modi- you know. modify it to anything. And you that want. is like that's a, that's a very classic magical trap. <laughs> oh, absolutely, but it's nice. You know? Yeah, I mean, you know, especially you know, if, you know, if like what if you combine it with a mimic encounter? Yeah, now that's bringing up a good point. Mimic isn't in here, right here. For as a like, a, hey, this could be a trap. Is there any like in the monsters manual? These guys count as as trap kind of things, or is that that's just going to be up to the DM? Like, hey, you can use a gargoyle statue. That's really a gargoyle, but he's there and waiting for somebody. You can use a mimic, and that that's would be part of the trap concept, right? Without uh, with while using a monster rather than a mechanical or magical thing. So, it like, would be g- still give you a feel of a trap without being. Yeah, here's, here's a mechanical a, or magic trap. I'm just going to read Fire Breathing Statue real quick. This trap activates when an intruder steps on the hidden pressure plate, releasing a magical gout of flame from the nearby statue. The statue can be anything, including a dragon or a wizard casting a spell. Again, this this goes back to you know when we're talking about in a previous video and hazards is you got to describe the the dungeon dressing right. to get buy-in from this because if if you never describe anything but all of a sudden you have a statue of a dragon. Or anything, your players are going to want to go. Oh, I'll avoid it. I'll avoid it. It's a monster, you know, mm-hmm. or it's you know, it's a trap. It's something, right? Yeah. So there's going to be carvings. There's going to be things in in a in a fortress or in a dungeon. So then we go on. The DC is 15 to spot the pressure plate, as well as faint scorch marks on the floor or walls. Which I think adding that part is really cool. Mm-hmm. So you know, so uh, a spell or other effect that can sense the presence of magic, magic such as detect magic, reveals an aura of evocation magic around the statue. The trap activates when more than 20 pounds of weight is placed on the pressure plate, causing the statue to release a 30-foot cone of fire. Each creature in the fire must make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw, taking 4 die 10 fire damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. Of course, they give the average damage, but we never use that. We like to roll dice. Wedging and here's an, here's one of the parts I was talking about that I really like. Wedging an iron spike or other object under the pressure plate prevents the trap from activating. S- a successful dispel magic DC thirteen cast on the statue destroys the trap. So I like that they give you know how to how to neutralize the trap, how to destroy the trap. Mm-hmm. You know some of the flavor text with the scorched walls or floor. Um, you know locating the pressure plate. And all the tra- all the traps are set-, set up like that. I'm not going to read them all to you guys. Get the DMG look through. But I just wanted to point out those things in there mm-hmm. in the description that I like. So now I take that information. I go back. I make my own trap and go, oh, okay. And then if you look at some of the other ones, it also talks about investigate. So sometimes you need like three checks to get by a tra- uh, the trap. You mm-hmm. got to you got to spot it. You got to you gotta figure it. out how to do it, and then you got to do it. And you got to do it. So yeah, it's kind of cool. I, you know, I like the layout. I like what they did. Um, I, you know, they, I think they cover enough of the areas for you to to improvise something. You know, you know, like the poison darts. Maybe you don't want to use a dart. Maybe you want to use a crossbow, tra- cross, a crossbow bolt trap instead. And you know, there's no poison. Right. You know, or a spear trap, and there's no poison. Or you know, hey, you could do either of those with the poison. And, or it's know. worse than the standard poison. You, you know, just you go ahead the... back to the poison section and say, you know what, <laughs> I'm going to do this trap. But on top of that, I'm going to add weaver. Did they, did they include poison gas traps? If not, then I'm going to say poison gas trap and just use one of the poisons that are is inhalation based. Absolutely. In Let's the back. just basically go off a pressure plate. You know, you have a pressure plate. They step on it. It puts out the poisonous. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, Cast. yeah. I mean, you could take the stuff from here and go, okay, what's the DC for a pressure plate? What's it take to disarm it? And what happens? Oh, they step on the plate. The door, the door's shut, 
And you know, and the gas fills the room. Yeah, I wasn't even going evil by shutting the doors. I was just like, okay, well, it's you, be, get, you get exposure to the poison. You know, it would just, have to be like an acidic cloud if it's going to hurt him right away without, uh, or a lot of gas. But, <laughs> but you're right. You know, instead, yo, know, instead of a needle trap, they open the chest and they get a face full of uh, poison. Yeah. You know, as a gas, yeah. whoever just opened it. So you know, so there's definitely some interesting things like you that you can do. Indeed. You know, you, the you know you have the collapsing roof. Which is cool, and it's also cool about that too. Is after it collapses, it creates difficult terrain. <laughs> so then it becomes like a hazard You're like, as well ah, as a trap. Climbing over the pieces of roof that hit me. I'm climbing over the pieces of roof that are on top of my companion. <laughs> every every step. Oh, get, get off! <laughs> and you know the rolling sphere. That's classic Indiana Jones. Oh yeah. <laughs> you got to throw that in there, and, and it's also one of the most damaging. So uh, what do you think? Have we successfully disarmed the traps? We I sprung it. We've we sprung, sprung the traps. So we're falling into them, but yeah. So, uh, any closing thoughts? I just well laid out. I like it. Yeah, I really enjoy the uh, severity table and the 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 range on the level as well for the damage. Really yeah. helps you when you're going to do that customized trap. Well, and that's it. You know, really, they didn't have to put any traps in there. Just a how to was good, but I like they the, they give you a half a dozen examples. They or set so. a good bar for the examples. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and it was you know the ranges were all over the place. The variety there. good. And it also I, worth mentioning too is it talks about the fact that you know traps can just be inconvenient as well. They don't yeah. actually have to do damage. Yeah, right. And and you know ultimately most parties are going to have a rogue, so that they're they're going to have somebody who's who's dealing with traps. So if you have stuff that's you know out there that they can easily deal with, it gives the rogue well here's your thing, you know take care of it. And you know if if you engage each each of your players with with every encounter or with every every session, they all feel that they're a part of this ongoing story. So you want to try and give them that. Right, or maybe your maybe your your casters have to work with the rogue to disarm a magical trap. Mm -hmm. You know, because not every rogue is going to take investigate. They've got so many things to do. So if you've got the rogue can spot it and disarm it, but he might not figure out how. You need to rely on whoever else has investigate. So, I think I think it's uh, a really cool way to to let that happen. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess we can I guess we can put the pen in this one. All right. Mm -hmm. So you guys, uh, let us know what you think. Comment, like, subscribe, and even share. Check us out on nerdarchy.com. You can also check us out on Facebook. And with that, until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.